Now we look at yet another sequential logic storage device, and this one is called the SR Latch with Enable. Now, just to kind of remember where we're at, we're working from the cross-coupled inverter to the D flip-flop, and where we've been is we started with the cross-coupled inverter, we did the SR Latch, then we did the S bar R bar Latch, and now we're going to do an SR Latch with Enable. And it turns out that this, the enable circuit that we put into this new latch is the reason we wanted to have an inverted version of the SR latch. So this was an interim step. So now we finally get to the point where you understand why, or we explain why we're going to have that enable, or that inversion on there. So this one becomes a little bit more complicated, but let's take a look at, let's take a look at the final, the final circuit that we're going to have here. So this is the SR latch with enable. So here's what we have. We are going to introduce a new signal, and it is going to be called C. And you'll see why later, or it will become clear why. C, actually I'll just tell you, it stands for clock. So C is going to be the enable line. Uh, well, actually, it's going to put the SR latch, this now, notice this is the SR R bar, S bar R bar latch, and this now is going to be the enable circuit, and we have our S and our R right here. Now if you think about the way that we had drawn it before, the S, the S bar R bar latch, we actually had the S bar here, and we had the R bar there. And so it turns out that the way that these NAND gates work right here, we are going to be able to put this into a store state, put the latch into a store, and then when it's not in a store state, these NAND gates will actually invert S and R so that you can back them out so that they have the, the same polarities as before. Okay, so just to go through that and kind of figure out how it works, let's take a look at what if this thing stores information, okay? So to do that, let's look at this situation right here. So we got, we got to remember what the NAND gate is. So we got the NAND gate on here, the NAND gate truth table. And I want to look at the situation, the store state, where we say C is equal to zero means it's going to store. Well, okay. <clears throat> the truth table for a NAND gate is 00011011, and the output is 1110. Well, more importantly, whenever you have a zero on the input of any NAND gate, the output's going to be a one. So that means I can actually put a zero here. That will force the outputs of both of these to be ones. Well, if you remember, when you look at the truth table for an S bar R bar latch, when you have one and one on the S bar and the R bar, that is indeed the store state. So it puts this latch portion into the store. Well, that's great. So Q is last Q and QN is last QN. So I can do that with a single signal. So this is great. I can just put C is equal to zero. It doesn't matter what S and R are. It's just going to put this into the store state. Okay. So let's take a look now at the, let's take a look at the, let's scroll down here so you can see truth table too. Okay, so I'll go like this, there you go. All right, so now I'm gonna put this into, let's test it and say, I want to have a set state. So let's see if set works. So the first thing we gotta do is take C to a one, okay, because when C was a zero, you were storing. So I have to put C is equal to a one, and that allows the NAND gates to do something other than just output ones. So let's take a look at when S is equal to a one, and R is equal to a zero. Well, you have a one and a one on the NAND gate, the output is a zero you have a one and a zero on the inputs to an AND gate down here, the output's a one. Look at what happened. The output of these, this NAND enable circuit, S was inverted, one became a zero, and R was inverted, zero became a one. That right there is great because when you have an S bar, R bar latch, and you have your S bar input equal to a zero, and your R bar input equal to a one, guess what? That is the set state. So you assert the set by putting it to a low. So this will then go into the set state and the output will be a one. So it worked, this is great. Okay, well let's take a look at the, I wanna look at the reset state. And this is what the reset state looks like. 
And notice now we're going to put r is equal to 1 and s is equal to 0 and see if it resets it. Again, c has to be equal to a 1 because that is going to allow the NAND gates to do something other than just output 1s. So now in this situation, we have a 0 and a 1 on this NAND gate here. Anytime you have a 0, you get a 1 in the output, and this is going to be s bar. Well, down here you have a 1 and a 1, and that's this condition right here for the NAND gate. So the output here is a 0, and that's going to be r bar. Look at what happened. S was a 0, it became a 1. R was a 1, it became a 0. So this enable circuit is interesting. It does two things. The first thing it does is if you put a 0 on C, the outputs of both of these will go to a 1. And we use that to put the latch portion into the store state. When it is a 1, it will actually invert S and it will invert R. That was why we had to build the S bar, R bar latch, because we needed it to behave with, it needed to do the set and reset, but it also had to assert with opposite input polarities. So now, when you have S bar is equal to a 1, R bar is equal to a 0, this is the reset state, because Q went to a 0, and that, if you looked at the truth table for the S bar, R bar latch, it's simply in the, in the reset state. So this is great. So this, this worked for the three situations that we care about. We can store information, we can set the outputs, and we can also reset the output. So this is great. It's doing everything that we want it to do. Okay, we still have the situation, when you look at the final true table of this, when you look at the final true table, let's go back to the original drawing that we had. There's a situation where when C is a, is a zero, you, have, you don't care what the S and R are, you store. When you have C is equal to a one, you're gonna have two situations that you don't wanna use. So the first one is where you have zero and zero on the inputs, and that puts the S bar, R bar latch into a situation that you don't wanna use. That's gonna drive its outputs to the same, it's gonna put it into a store state, but you don't wanna use that state. Okay, so if you think about what's happening there, S bar, so S is a zero, R is a zero, that means that S bar and R bar are going to be driven in as ones, and that is now the situation that you don't want to use. So then, what we do there, oh, I'm sorry, I totally misspoke. <laughs> that puts it into a store state. Okay, so it indeed stores it, okay? That was totally wrong with the way I just described that. It stores it, but we don't want to use S and R to store. We want to use C to store. So C is the new signal we introduced so that we can store. We could put it into a store state, but we don't want it. We don't want to use S and R for that. We just want to use S and R to, to set and reset. Okay, so that's fine. So we'll have a store state which is valid, but we don't want to use it. So then you have, again, you have your reset state, you have your set state, and then down here, this is the one where you put the S bar, R bar latch into an, a situation where both outputs are ones, and you don't want that because the both outputs are one. That's fine, they're driven to something, but when you let go of them and you go into a store state, then you have no idea where the end is gonna be. Okay, so this is the next interim storage device on our way to the deep flip-flop. It's called the SR latch with enable. And the enable, again, the enable behavior is why we had to build the S bar, R bar latch because we want S and R to be, to have positive polarities as inputs. But the way that the NAND works in this enable circuit, it will invert them when you are in the normal operation stage. So that's the SR latch with enable.